morning friends i am arun kakur i was a professor of surgery in malanja medical college I retired in 2012 and has been fortunate fortunate enough, enough to be with you guys who are doing dnb in general surgery and at times some of the cmes who interacting with you young folks who would be doing post graduation and surgery is sad that uh, some of you are jumping straight into super specialities like neurosurgery cardiac surgery or urology without doing general surgery as my personal opinion i may be wrong that to be a complete surgeon irrespective of which part of the body you are specializing in you have to have a broad outlook about all the system and that can be covered only if you do a general surgery i think the good old tradition that you do general surgery you do a senior residency for a year or two and then go into super specialty had a merit and i still think it has a merit rather than do your mbba do internship and then get into a five years of super specialty whichever you want to because there are few things which are not dealt in that super specialty that's my experience of course i may be wrong but i know in the hearts of hearts many of you who have not done a general surgery would realize that it does make a difference for example you're doing a urology you got a case of urological problem and the person has an associated peripheral vascular disease how many of you would be able to clinically evaluate that patient you would straight away request your colleagues in general surgery or in vascular surgery in a way you may be right but don't you think it is necessary that we should know how to evaluation the peripheral pulsations how to record a history a person who has come to you with a kidney problem doesn't mean doesn't mean that he can't have associated gastrointestinal or a vascular or a pulmonary problem we have divided the body into various segments and similarly unfortunately we including so called faculty had divided our brains into various segments that my brain will only be handling urology b person's brain would be only handling neuro neurosurgery that doesn't work out i'm afraid that's not true it's not rare that sometimes the general surgeon is called to put a foley's insert a foley's catheter and a 55 year or 60 year old man who has undergone a craniotomy why because the neurosurgeon doesn't have enough experience taking that as a background i think it's important to know how to evaluate a person who comes to you with a peripheral vascular disease and the common peripheral vascular diseases that you come across are thrombotic angiitis obliterans in trans, and the lower limbs atherosclerosis and in the upper limb is vasospastic disorders like renards 
phenomena or Raynaud's disease or ischemia in the upper limb due to scalenus anticus syndrome or cervical rib. And of course, embolus can occur anywhere more often in the lower limb than in the upper limb. When a patient comes with a chronic ischemia, though classically Burgess involves lower limb, but upper limbs are not rare. So, in the evaluation after having taken a history and amongst irrespective of whether it is chronic atherosclerosis or it is a Burgess disease or it is a vasospastic disorders, one of the things that must be asked from a person is history of smoking. That is possibly the contributing factor in large percentage of cases. So, in history, in addition to taking the history of claudication, the dis claudication distance, the rest pain, etc., it is relevant to take a history of smoking, diabetes, drug abuse, any previous surgery. Having done that, when it comes to do clinical evaluation, besides the general physical examination, you have to examine the pulsations. Whether the person has come to you with a disease involving the lower lip or the young lady has come to you with a ischemia of the fingers. Overall evaluation is a necessity. One of the other conditions which is not common fortunately is arteriovenous fistulas. Even there you have to do the same examination. So, today we are going to concentrate on how to examine the pulsations in a patient who comes with the Burgess disease, you first examine the lower limb pulsations and an, a young lady who comes to you with a Raynaud's or features suggestive cervical rib or scalenus anticus syndrome, you have to examine the pulsations of the upper limb. Whenever it is a chronic ischemia, the examination of heart is also important. Agreed as a general surgeon, we are not expected to know S1 and S2, but we are expected to know if there is if there is a cross cardiomegaly or if there are gross murmurs or there are features of cardiac failure. Well, leaving those aside, we will be focusing only today about examination of various pulsations in the upper limb and the lower limb. Since vasospastic disorders more often involve lower limbs, we will start with the examination of pulsations of the lower limb. Later. Like a uh, basic principle of physical examination is inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. Of course, there is no question of percussion, but inspection is very important. Before you examine the pulsations, you look for signs of chronic ischemia or an acute ischemia. Acute ischemia is quite obvious, the limb is pale, you will find that the veins are collapsed. The chronic ischemia is sometimes if you are not careful you may miss and the evidences are if you remember 
the first structure to suffer a blood supply is the skin. And the evidence that a person has been having a chronic ischemia, the skin manifestations are, you would see that there is loss of hair or there are sparse hair. There is a trophy of the skin. It is a, this is a healthy skin, a trophy of the skin. There are changes in the nails. You might find that if you elevate the limb a little bit, the veins, because the blood arterial flow is decreased, the venous return is decreased and you get a gutter-like appearance along the course of long saphenous vein. Might see tapering of tips of digits, might see absence of sweating, absence of subcutaneous fat and having done inspection, you might see the, the limb which is affected between the normal and abnormal, the skin temperature changes, the limb which is undergoing or has undergone chronic arterial insufficiency would be colder compared to the normal skin. If it is secondary to diabetes, may have loss of sensation because of neuropathy. So inspection is over, the palpation is over. As a part of palpation, is examination of various pulsations. In the lower limb, the first pulsation is you palpate for the femoral artery and we all know femoral artery is nothing but a continuation of external iliac artery and is best felt in the femoral triangle just below the medinguinal point. The best way to palpate the femoral artery is gently flex the knee and hip a little bit, externally rotate it and then you palpate the pulsations of femoral artery against the head of femur. Normally femur is within the acetabulum. So to make it better, we externally flex it and externally rotate the hip joint so that the head comes out a little bit from the acetabulum and you can palpate the pulsations of the molar artery. This is what is also called as common femoral artery and you can palpate both sides at the same time. It's better if you complete on one side and then you do it on the other side. Having done the femoral artery, it continues beyond the adductor canal as a popliteal artery. And in the lower limb, one of the most difficult pulsation is feeling for the popliteal artery. Popliteal artery is situated in the middle of popliteal fossa and is felt best against the condyles of the tibia. Mind you, popliteal artery is not felt against the medial or lateral condyle of the femur or the apicondyle, it is palpated against the condyle of the tibia.